So what we'd like to do today, uh, now I'm sharing my screen here, is just uh, go over some of the major enhancements in the 2.6 version of SSP, which we released last November. Uh, there were quite a few uh, major uh, features that were added, uh, ones that people have been asking for for quite a while, and feedback and working with you all on implementations over the last uh, couple of years, uh, we've been able to get some of those in. Uh, those include the Watch Student feature, uh, which everyone, I think, was excited to hear. Uh, removing the limitation that you could uh, only be kind of tracking one student as those students are assigned to you. Now you can have your assigned students, and you can watch as many students as you want, uh, essentially acting as a coach in terms of notification and lists. You can all see that. Uh, we added in some bulk actions uh, for caseload allowing you to do some exports, some program status changes, as well as email. Again, getting back to uh, a lot of what you all had reported to us in the day-to-day -day activities, being able to do uh, some of those bulk actions, uh, emailing the same message to many students and exporting when you work in Excel or mailing lists, uh, those were added. A couple of new reports, uh, courtesy of some work that was funded by Broward College. Uh, some navigation improvements and a few configurations in my GPS, as well as a lot of report fixes. For those of you who've been in 2.6, you'll see that the CSV reports uh, had a lot of improvements. And then as well as whatever we uh, included in the 2.5 series release is always in the next release. 2.6 and some bug fixes along the way. So what I'd like to do today is walk through some of those new features that we have uh, and show you what we've done that will hopefully improve your lives. Uh, so I've logged into SSP. Uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar, this is the landing page uh, whereby we separate out different access for uh, different users, uh, including the different portlets that are available. For example, as an administrator, I can manage users. As a faculty member, I can um, submit early alerts. Uh, as a student, I can use my GPS. The account today that I'm using has access to all of those, but it would allow you uh, some security in terms of what users can access. Uh, the landing page here on SSP on the left-hand side is what we call the caseload assignment area. It's where you're able to manage, search for students, and then a list of tools along vertical axis here of the tools that uh, would be turned on. In our case, we have all of the students, all of the tools turned on. And the right-hand side would be the tool details where you work at the tools. So the first thing that you should see when you log into 2.6 is uh, the tabs now have uh, a new entry here. So before, you just had the My Caseload and Search. Now we have My Watch List. So when you initially log in as a coach user, you see your list of students who are assigned to you. Uh, and this is probably a small caseload for many. Uh, but what we have is a list of these students along with the number of open early alerts. These are students that are assigned to me as a coach, whether that information is passed over from the external data load, meaning you have assignments of students to coaches, advisors in your student face system, or whether you manage it within SSP, this becomes your list of students. You'll also see within the changes in appearance, we have uh, changed a few icons and added in a couple of drop-down combo boxes here uh, so that you're able to add and edit students that appear in the list. For individual students now, as you hover over, you'll see the tooltip whereby you can set the program status of active, not participating, no show, and inactive for any student that we select. So we have here to the right now this combo box that is labeled bulk action. And these are bulk actions that will take effect on any student that appears in the list. So of these nine students, if I wanted to send those students an email or export or set all of their program statuses, I can do that in bulk. 
So for example, uh, if I want to send an email, I get a confirmation here that nine users will be emailed. And then I presented the dialog here whereby I can send an email. In this case, the email feature works very similarly to the individual message student that has been in SSP for a couple of versions, whereby you can record the information as a journal entry, which for posterity reasons allows others to know that you were emailing a student and the content. When selected, you have a confidentiality level as to who can view the information in the journal tool. And then you have the options of where you want to send the email, the school email address. We all know that many students don't check those, so sending it to an alternate address is also helpful. And then you can CC anyone, multiple users if you want, separated by comma. But I have the subject uh, line here to register for courses. And then I can type in the body. And uh, one of the features that we added in recently was also the ability to do markup. Um, so we have an editor here that's a rich text editor that if we want to change uh, an underline or if we want to make it bolded. And you'll see this throughout uh, where we have messages uh, in the map tool, in the message student tool, where this rich text editor is now pretty standard across the board. And we maintain that throughout the app, like in the journal entry as well as the email. So you can add a little bit more. You can't do full Word processor, Microsoft Word-like activities, but you can do quite a few things here. So what's going to happen now that I have entered my message information uh, is we have nine students that would be queued up to send this. So once I'm finished with my message and I click save, it's sent into a queuing system. So these messages don't go out automatically because there could be a, a large number of messages that are sent. We create this request and then SSP behind the scenes send these, send these messages out in, in batches and we have control over them. But it'll send out a hundred at a time until they're all sent. Uh, but the journal entry itself for these students, and I'll quickly show, uh, selecting over into the journal tool, that an email was sent. You can see that it's recorded the email that I just sent as a journal entry, as well as, as always, the previous journal entries, the most recent was stored here at the top, and I can see the detail. And this occurred for all of the students. So it's a nice handy way to be able to send a message to a large number of students, like when registration is coming. Um, if you have a, a list of students that you found in the search tool uh, that were below a 2.0 and you needed to send them some resource information, whatever it would be. So instead of doing these individually and doing these out of band within uh, your email program on campus, you can send it now that they're journaled, other people can see what's been going on with that student because what may happen is, is you may have a student in your caseload that you send an email that is being watched by another coach or advisor. So that's the second tab that we have here, the watch list. So the watch list acts very similarly to the coach assignment. So we saw students that were assigned to me. Uh, there are students that are not assigned to me that my, I may have an interest in. Say a student is a double major, uh, they're working in multiple career communities, maybe the student is an athlete and their primary coach advisor is an athletic advisor, but they work, uh, the student is pursuing a degree in my area. I would want to watch that student so that not only can I get a very quick list of students similar to my caseload, I log in, I see my students on my watch list, I can create my own list. Now I have one student here. Uh, the way the watch list works is it's an opt-in process. 
Uh, so you'll see that as I select this student, and I have uh, the main tool loaded here on the right, the context changes up here, but I can unwatch the student. So you would have to go in and select the students either individually or as one of the bulk options to watch or unwatch. So for example, I have a list of these, uh, a list of one student. If I were to go into a search and let's say um, I wanted to find students that uh, their first name was John. I just happen to like advising students whose first name is John. Uh, I have quite a few students whose first names are, are John. And now what I can do is use my bulk action tool. And now I can watch those students. So seven students will be considered for watch. Users that haven't uh, already been created will be on Affected. Roll to watch has been queued. So in this case, we're also using a queuing system. And uh, again, like the email, this happens in a background. And as SSP behind the scenes processes these uh, students, they will begin to show on my watch list. So if I go back into my watch list, you can see that. It happens pretty immediately. It's not an overnight process. It's not a very long process. Uh, what's happened here is these students are now in my list. So I have multiple students in my watch list now that were added because uh, I did that bulk action. Now, another thing that we've added in to the system, and that's this last combo box here, uh, is the ability to use the filter here to show uh, all of the program statuses. If you remember before, you had to uh, change the drop down and you had to click a button and it was kind of confusing in which view you were in. Now, just based on making your selections, you can change this filter to show all or any one of the program statuses. So if I choose all now, or if I choose inactive, you'll see that the list changes. That doesn't mean that I'm not watching them. It just means I filtered out my list. So just as you had in my caseload, uh, the ability to filter out students. If you have hundreds of students on the inactive list, you only want to see the active list of students. It's much, much easier to navigate through that list by doing your filter. Those filters now are based on your selection instead of a so now I have a watch list, and this watch list then is available for me to use as before <clears throat> within the application. The other effects of the watch list would be any time there would be an automated email like a student receiving an early alert. So if, this, if a faculty member submit an early alert, for one of the students that existed in your caseload, you of course would be notified via email of the details of the early alert. The same thing now occurs if one of your students in your watch list receives an early alert, you will also be notified of that email. So if you got emails as a coach in an automated fashion before through SSP, you will get those same emails now if you're watching the student. All right, so again, managing your students through either your caseload, you have multiple new actions, you have a new tab, which allows you to do watching of students, and you have the search. And you'll see as I've gone through each one of these tabs, you still have uh, the same actions available to you. A couple of those other actions are one that we did not hit on <clears throat> specifically uh, was the export to CSV. So now what you're able to do is take any one of your result sets, whether it's uh, a search, whether it's your watch list, <coughs> excuse me, 
or your caseload in any kind of a filter, you can now export that list to a CSV file. So it's going to take this list, export it to a CSV, uh, and you can see at the bottom as it opens up, and I think you can see my Excel, maybe you're only seeing Chrome, uh, but what I have is uh, a list of students in the CSV with a few of the details um, that are, exist with the students, their name, their ID, their email, birthday, basically some identifying information that we carry about all students. It's not a full student report. Uh, pretty much what you will see in this area of SSP or anything that you would see when you're editing the student. You'll see their contact info, their coach, student type, start here. So it's a, it's, a, it's a good start as to what you would be able to export and do any kind of sorting, filtering in Excel, any type of calculations that you would want to do. Now you have that in, in a CSV. All right, so that is uh, a list of all of the changes that we have in the caseload. Uh, it's much nicer now to manage these multiple students and navigate as well as perform these bulk actions. Another change that you're already seeing, uh, which is a very big change for what we're doing, is the main tool was modified quite a bit uh, to reorganize some information, but also to add in what we're calling our indicators. So as I click on any one of these students, by default, the main tool is what loads for each student. And the main tool primarily has been a summary of information that exists in SSP for information that comes into the external database, which is the load from your SIS, so that you can see as a snapshot uh, more information about the student. And that's listed in tab format, horizontally across the top. Our dashboard is where you'll see one of the biggest changes. Uh, so if you recall from the older versions, we had many different columns that showed a lot of different data. Financial aid data, academic history, GPAs, standings, credit hours. There was a lot there. And what it wasn't for us is really a dashboard to get a quick view. If someone wanted a nice visual along with the most important details uh, to most of the users, we weren't doing that. We were showing a whole lot of details, which is the second tab. They're important details, but they're not always what you need at a quick glance. So instead of just showing a lot of data, what we've done now is added in these indicators. So indicators are divided into three different categories. By default, you will get student indicators and intervention indicators. And these indicators are data that comes into SSP, uh, either through the external database as primary uh, pieces of data for students, or intervention indicators are actions that take place within SSP. So for example, what we have in our student indicators um, is based on research and talking with customers, we came up with six of the highest level indicators uh, that are available to us what a GPA is for a student, completion rate, satisfactory academic progress, any restrictions, their academic standing, and whether or not they're registered. So as you load data into the SSP external database, this, these are normal pieces of data that you would enter. Now you can set up uh, basically a test to define how these are displayed. So, for example, you'll see in our GPA, we have labeled this poor. There's a value of 2.10 within this GPA. So it's a cumulative GPA, and we're saying that a 2.0 is poor. You have the ability to define your tests um, in a scale format so that you could say uh, 0 to 2 is poor, 2 to 3 uh, is fair and is okay, and 
three to four is good. So based on that data that exists in the external database and these tests that you're going to define, you will get a rendering in terms of colors and a configurable label that will allow you to show in a snapshot this kind of a dashboard appearance. You also have uh, another is a text base or a string test so that you could look for words. So in this example, good standing is showing us as good. Uh, so that's going to render as green. It looks like it's a good thing for students. It's we need to stop light scenario here, uh, red, yellow, green. Uh, and now we can evaluate this good standing as good, whereas another student may have uh, a good GPA. So they're now rendering a 3.64 as a good GPA. You may have uh, other students, again, with low GPAs, you may have uh, students with, you know, anywhere within the range, we're going to render that GPA with a specific color. So, you have a few of the tests that you can write. So, out of the box, you'll have scale-based numeric tests, which would apply to the GPA, the completion rate. And then you're going to have your SAP standing and restrictions, which are all text tests based, excuse me. And then your registration. So registration is one where you have just a couple of configurable options, uh, whether registration means to you that they're currently registered in today's term, or whether they are in today's term plus a future term. Uh, and those may change throughout the year as you open up and close registration. You may want them to be registered for the next term for this to appear in green. So those are the student indicators. Those are all going to be based on external data that you load in. Most schools load that in, you know, once a day, overnight. Your intervention indicators are a little bit more active. And the four intervention indicators mimic a lot of the activity that you're working on in the different tools. So you have intake, alerts, tasks, and map. So going from uh, the bottom right map, what you will have here is the ability to test against what their plan status would be. So SSP internally calculates on plan, off plan, and then you have two variations of the on track. So you would be able to assign any one of those to your basically your good, okay, or poor assignments. In this case, a student is on plan, so we're showing green. We have alerts, and the test for alerts would be the number of open. Regardless of how many, we're looking for the number of open. Um, so we have uh, no open early alerts, so that would be good. If a student had 12 open early alerts, that's something that we might show as uh, rendering as poor. Same thing with tasks are very similar. So as you use the action plan to assign tasks to student students, and they can work within my GPS to complete those tasks or work with the coach advisor to work with to complete the tasks. As the tasks close, your, your ratio is going to change. And now within the main tool, we can show how that relates. The intake is based on completion or incompletion. So if they hadn't completed it, we would have four. If they completed it, we're going to have uh, this green color. And you've got, as I said before, you've got configurations. We can take a look at those really quickly on how some of these work. But before we do that, I want to show the risk indicators. So the risk indicator is the one area where you have almost complete control on which indicator boxes or indicators themselves will show up. These 10 right here are static. So everyone's going to get these 10. You have the ability to uh, not show data and have a gray color uh, if you don't want to evaluate them with one of the tests. But these 10 are going to be static. You can add in these risk indicators through a new 
external database table, and they can really be anything that you want. If you use any kind of standardized assessments, if you have trend reports, if you have anything at all you want to add, you have total control over how these are added, as well as the tests. So I did a real simple one to show here whether a student is in a dev ed course. So I wrote a little test that says, you know, does the student have dev ed? What is the value? The value is true. So we're going to say, you know, from a risk indicator, you know, they're, they're, they're going to be at risk. Uh, you can load in other types of factors, like if you do any kind of term-to-term -term progression measurements, maybe institutional research, maybe you have an assessment uh, company, or maybe there's other data that you're using either from the state or the clearinghouse or one of the other uh, companies that do that work. You can now load in very simply this data to show additional indicators. Uh, I've worked with Sinclair to set this up. Uh, they have an indicator that shows um, students who uh, have a security risk on campus. You know, so that if a student were to come in and you bring them up, we say, oh my gosh, they, you know, they've got some sort of a problem. You could do this for fines. You could do it for, for anything that you would want to show uh, some sort of, of general indicator here. So this list uh, can be much larger. Again, you have not only complete control over which one show, but you also have control over the order of these. So you can move these uh, around by just creating a sort order. Uh, and you still have the tooltips. Uh, as we add in these risk indicators, uh, you will get this third column. So the tooltips are very helpful. So you can add some descriptions in here uh, to use long uh, indicator names. If you don't have any risk indicators loaded or defined, then only these first two indicator categories, these first two columns will appear. So there would be a little bit more real estate. Uh, but we've gone ahead and, and done this uh, proportionally. And then if you have multiple, you'll get you know, more of a scrolling effect here if you have 10, 12 different risk indicators. So that is... Uh, the change to the dashboard. Uh, we're definitely very excited about this to be able to have more of a, a dashboard approach. The details uh, that we had before, which showed everything that we could, again, duplicating a lot of what the dashboard had, but the details we reformatted in such a way that uh, you now have a lot of the earned and attempted totals over in the same area where you have the term totals. So we have a box for you know, your cumulative summary and then your term summary would have every single term that's loaded for as many terms as the, the student has, has completed in the campus. Same values uh, appear, paid, their GPA, earned, attempted hours, each one of the terms. On the left hand side we have a kind of a roll up of some demographic and academic information. So we try to group these a little bit better. Uh, but here's where we can find, you know, a lot of the information that gets loaded into the intake tool or defined in the intake tool. Academic program, intended program, start terms, anticipated, and transfer hours. So it's some basic demographic information along with the map information at the bottom, still with the navigation to do your email and print functions. What we've separated out here is we added in a new tab, and that's the financial tab. Uh, we found that uh, mixing this information in uh, not only became uh, very cluttered on the page because we just had so much information that, that people wanted, as well, uh, some of the financial information uh, was not being populated by schools. So separating this out just gives us a little bit better organization, and it gives us a little better way uh, to present the information. If you recall in the other versions, the financial aid awarded and the file status actually was a pop-up that would occur on the page, uh, which made it a little bit difficult to, to use. Um, and here we can create the list separately on the page without ever needing to do a lot of pop-ups. So same information. We didn't change uh, anything. We just really detailed 
aggregated uh, information and separated it out. All right, one other change. Um, do I have a student? We did change some logic on the schedule tab uh, and the transcript tab. So what now shows between the two Uh, the transcript used to show just the historical courses, and the schedule tab would show uh, your current. Now what shows is the schedule tab changed the logic so it shows current and future courses. So you'll be able to see other courses that were registered in upcoming terms, and the transcript would still show uh, just those completed terms. All right. So we had a few other changes that uh, we added in to reports. So one of the things that you'll notice that on the reports, we always use the assigned coach as one of the report criteria. We've added in where appropriate, now we have the watch list. So as reports are run, you can not only use the assigned coach information, but if they're on your watch list, you can now run reports for students that are on your watch list. It works exactly the same as the assigned coach worked before, and it was added to several of the reports. So now you can not only see your list and caseload assignment, you can use the reports to find them, and there's also a search criteria there. So assigned coach or my watch list, you can now find those students across the board. But there were a couple of new reports that were added, uh, again, courtesy of Broward College. Uh, one of those reports is the course counts report. So, and this is a really simple example uh, of that. Uh, basically, what we're going to see in the course counts report is a list of the total number of students uh, for a given <coughs> term and the total number of alerts. So they're using this to find out the basically the alert rates for these courses. And you would also be able to see not only the number of students that receive an alert, but also if a student received multiple alerts, you would see the larger numbers there. The other report that was added is a reason counts report. So in previous versions, we were tracking a lot of what was happening happening on the outreach and the outcome side. So after an alert was submitted, what types of outreaches were working effectively for us and what types of outcomes. So the reason report allows us to see more about why these were submitted so that we can get information about what's going into these alerts. So again, very simple example that we had for this physics course. So you'll see a list of the students down in your report details. And this is something that we added into a couple of other reports. As campus was becoming uh, predominant for a lot of the implementers, as we're showing this information, we're now showing the campus and the term associated along with the student. A lot of times before, we would just see student and course. Uh, so having the campus and the term in these reports, several of the reports now, become very helpful. But here we see a list of those students, the number of reasons that they had, and at the top, again, this is a very simple example, but you'll see a chart now of all of the different reasons that were used. So the number of occurrences on the number of alerts. So we have two alerts, uh, tardiness is occurring. So you'll be able to get a real snapshot of why your students are getting alerts based on what faculty are submitting. And that'll give you a little bit more insight into, uh, from a reporting standpoint, you know, what's going on to be more proactive about uh, some of these items. Uh, so these reports are now available, again, in the same PDF and also the CSV output. So you can load these into Excel for All right, I'll show real quickly uh, in the search. We now have some reports.
formatting, as I mentioned before. Uh, you had my caseload and my plans. Now you have my watches. So the list here uh, can exclude or include down to the watch list. Uh, you see some reformatting. This was done in a 2.5 version uh, whereby we're attempting to try to keep this clean. There are a lot of search criteria that people want. It seems to be an endless list uh, of, of items to be able to do searches. We try to keep this as clean as possible. All right. Those are the major feature changes. Just make sure I'm not, not missing Uh, a couple of things with my GPS, and these are, uh, again, minor, but I think they were kind of sticky points for a lot of people. Uh, when you are logged in as a coach or higher level, which I am now, uh, coach, administrator, faculty, all rolled into one, and this is your view. Uh, a lot of times what would happen is when people would click on my GPS, it would take you to my GPS, surprisingly enough. Uh, more surprisingly was that once you went into the My GPS view, you couldn't get back to SSP. Uh, since you're not a student, this doesn't really become very helpful. It just kind of shows you uh, what the view is. You added a button in so you can go back to SSP without having to log out, re-log in, and do you know, the whole thing. So that's something that is very, very simple, but caused so many people heartache uh, that that was the case. Uh, let's see. So let me switch over. And I'll log in as a student and go into my GPS. So now as a student, uh, there are a couple of, of options you now have. Uh, they're very simple, but uh, this avoids uh, doing any kind of code customization, which I know several of the schools have done. Uh, what you're able to do now purely from a configuration standpoint, is the welcome text. So this welcome text listed here, where I'm saying this text can be fully customized, uh, this is done by a message template, just as you have all of the email templates and your map rendering. Uh, you can change this as a configuration option to changing code and maintaining that as a, as a code custom. The other thing that you can now do is your tools for success. Uh, one of the items that takes schools quite a while to complete is the counseling reference guide, which feeds your self-help guides as well as your search for resources. And a lot of times these are turned on immediately when the implementation goes live. So each one of these items now those of you that are very familiar with the tool should notice that the search for resources is missing. You now can control which of these items show, again, by a simple configuration. So I removed the search for resources from the list. Uh, so self-help guides, contact your coach, and then map can be configured. But remember, the view my academic plan only shows when the student has an active so if you're just wanting to turn it off totally, whether the student has an active plan or not, you can do that in the config file. There's also some navigation across the board now, whereby you can do uh, more back and home features. Uh, before, you'd kind of get lost, and you'd have to go all the way, you know, use the browser back button, or go back to the other URL if you were working in a guide, and then you can move back and forth and home. So just some real simple things in my GPS 
uh, that were added. The good news for us there is that my GPS is becoming uh, more widely used uh, for students, not only to view the map, but there's a lot of time that goes into building the counseling reference guide. We want to be able to make that available to a student, uh, to all students, as much as possible. Uh, we didn't have any changes uh, on the task side, but for those of you who are not familiar with MyGPS, uh, not only can they view their map, email their coach, and view self-help guides, uh, which are common referrals or solutions for challenges the student might have. As action plan tasks are created by coaches or advisors, those action plan tasks appear for the student and the student then can go in and view the details. They can mark tasks as complete. Again, affecting that dashboard rendering that we had before for the open number of tasks. So they can manage all of the tasks that exist just the same as the coaches can. They can print those and they can email those just the same and then change different. So that's my GPS. It's really a front end for them to, to work on tasks and, and view their map. And in this case, the map is a transcript style version of the student's plan, whereby for each one of the terms, you'll see the courses that were assigned for them to take, all the way down through the plan, as well as the, the total number. All right, those are the highlights of what we have in 2.6. Jason, do you want to just do a quick run through of a high level description of the, of the tools? Sure, yeah, I can do that. And then we don't have to go into detail, but at least folks on the phone that are new to SSP could get a general understanding of, of what each tool is designed to do. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, great. So again, as I make a selection of the student, our default main tool, which we went through uh, almost everything before, uh, the financial, the transcript shows transcript details, you can put in placement test scores, contact information, uh, and then you also see some coaching history. So within the coach tab, you see items that were created uh, within SSP, you see the journal entries that I've done. Whatnot. Uh, those are uh, a history of action within these different tools, like the intake tool. Uh, the intake tool is available for you all to use uh, to collect information about the student that's normally not stored in the student information system. These are more personal, but it, getting that information allows you to have more of a 360 degree view of a student so you can do more holistic advising. You know, knowing their GPA and their program uh, may not be as much information as you need to counsel someone if they're looking at, you know, what are some of their goals. So the intake tool is one that can be completed by a student in my GPS or a coach in this view. Uh, but what we have are some basic demographic information have education planning questions, a series of questions and answers that a student can go in and complete so that when you're starting an, an advising session with a student, you can look in the main tool to see some of their academic and intervention information, and then also look at the intake here to see you know, how they're paying for college, or have they self-identified any challenges that they may have. Uh, and these are all configurable, so when you see these options, you'll see that the options are configurable. You define your list. Uh, a lot of the uh, question text, almost all of the question text is configurable. And then you have options of what appears for the values for selection. The action plan tool I've mentioned a couple of times uh, really comes down to three different parts. Tasks, we talked about a little bit before, uh, whereby you can assign tasks to a student uh, those tasks can be based on uh, different challenges. So here I am going to build a task list for a student, and 
I mentioned the counseling reference guide before. That is a series of challenges and referrals. Uh, they're common resources that you already have on campus, you have on websites, you probably already have. But by entering them into SSP, if a student comes in with a problem with books and educational resources, I can see all of the, the different referrals that are available that I can take one of these and assign it to a student as a task. So we want them to go to the learning lab. So once I've added tasks, I now have more tasks for the student to review. You can document goals that a student has. You can document strengths that a student would have. So it's really a way for you, after you've done your initial interview assessment with a student, to start to put a plan in place for them. The journal tool is a place where you can go in and just create all kinds of notes about uh, the student. So as you have meetings or an appointment, uh, those notes become important for others to be able to see. So this is really just doing documentation so that you have, for posterity's sake, a history of interaction with a student. But it's also so that if you put in a note about a student, one of, your one of the people that are watching this student, can go in and see a conversation that you've had. Uh, they can be done in free form, and they can also be done in track step details, which allows you to predefine points of communication or tasks for a student uh, by the different categories. There are also some journal entries, like the email, that are automatically created, like your early alert responses are automatically captured here. I mentioned early alert, so the early alert tool is a way for your faculty members, or theoretically anyone, to use a roster of students to identify some sort of a problem that you are creating an alert as a faculty member that you want the assigned coach to go and start to help with an intervention on the student. Uh, so in this case, we had uh, an intervention or an alert sent for this student uh, that they had low test scores. They didn't give any suggestions, but they're concerned about excessive absences. This is a trigger point then for a coach to go and contact the student to find out what's going on, to see whether they can provide some assistance, maybe create an action plan for them. As the student, or as the coach, does work, they can record responses, which again, gives us more documentation. But there's some email communication that occurs behind the scenes that keeps all parties interested up to date. So an email will go back to the coach automatically. And an email can go to a referral location automatically. MAP is one of the, the bigger tools. Uh, MAP allows you to create an academic plan for a student. Uh, those plans can be done by manually selecting uh, courses and putting them onto a plan and there's some validation that occurs whether it's requisite or terms offered uh, but as you're going through this there are some nice features on building a plan to help build a plan put a plan in place for a student that gets them to graduation quicker I showed you really quickly the, the manual drag and drop there's also a template feature where you can create uh, templates which are plans of studies, their pathways, uh, their suggested course list. You can use those as a starting point for students as well uh, to basically uh, to reduce the amount of work and just modify it for individual students. Email student recovered in bulk, it's the same thing just for an individual student. The accommodation tool allows you to uh, record some information about uh, your disability services, so whether or not there's a disposition and any kind of accommodations that are made. And again, this is behind some security. We talked very briefly about security before. Uh, there is portlet level security as to what areas within SSP, but there's also some tool level security, and then there's record level security with the confidentiality levels. Uh, so you can turn this on or off, and you can give on, you can give certain permissions to users to get to the accommodation tool. Documents is a place for you to upload documents to store along with a student record. So if you have uh, a 
an unofficial transcript of a student brought in, a note from a professor, a letter of recommendation, whatever it would be, you can store uh, documents in here directly from your computer into the system for others to see. Notes. <clears throat> Notes is very similar to journal. Uh, the big difference is journal is a tool whereby you can create new entries into the system. The Notes tool is a read-only view that would allow you to put into SSP's external database uh, notes from other systems outside of SSP, like that exist in your uh, your SIS or your CR, CRM or other information that you have some other place. You load it into SSP so that they can see these notes along with the journal entries that are created uh, right in SSP. So it's a one place where they can go and, and view everything. The last tool is a caseload reassignment. Which managers and administrators have. It allows you to do a bulk feature of moving students from one caseload to another. If you have a coach or advisor that leaves, you need to move all of their students instead of doing them one by one. If you have an advisor who is on leave, you have an advisor on vacation, so you can move students around in, in bulk uh, very easily. Uh, the only other thing here is a coaching history report uh, in the top right, whereby you can get uh, a nice PDF report that shows you a lot of the information on the main tool, your success indicators, and then you see uh, really historical <clears throat> accounting of what has happened in SSP, journal entries, action plans, early alerts. So this is a PDF version of the same kind of history that we were looking at earlier in the main tool. But it's a nice portable document if you want to see, again, what's been happening with a student in SSP along with the information that's loaded into the external data.